seems that uh, everybody in our gospel story today was sort of flabbergasted in one way or the other. The people in the synagogue, the same people who, who knew Jesus when he was just a kid, were astonished by his teaching. When Jesus begins to teach in the synagogue, the people who listen to him notice that he doesn't speak, or more accurately, he no longer speaks the way he used to when growing up and hanging out with them. When he led the same kind of life that they did, an earthly and ordinary life, oriented towards things that are that are mainly limited to plain old human existence. The people of Nazareth were speaking of somebody that they knew very well. I mean, there was no chance of them having mistaken Jesus for somebody else. Truly, the inhabitants of Nazareth knew Jesus, the carpenter, the son of Mary, pretty well. But they knew him only in a human manner. Obviously, they, they saw and recognized Jesus, but they obstinately refrained from seeing anything more than the guy who grew up among them. On the outside, Jesus hadn't changed. But on the inside, the Holy Spirit filled and motivated Jesus to testify to the divine and eternal life that he manifested in his very person. And they took offense at him. To paraphrase a well-worn saying, familiarity not only breeds contempt, but it seems a certain degree of shallowness as well. And Jesus marveled at this. There are three sacraments which, according to our church doctrine, leave indelible marks and are therefore received only once. Baptism, confirmation, and holy orders. When we witness one of these sacraments taking place, let's say baptism, the outward appearance of the person receiving the sacrament doesn't change, except that, well, they may be soaking wet. But, inwardly, Something's changed profoundly. When James and I were ordained last year, we didn't look any different. James was still the son of Alton and Louise, the guy who works in the parish office. I was still Skip, the son of Paul and Mary Helen, the guy who sometimes plays the organ with the choir. Yet, something, not the work of any human, have been changed interiorly. We were given charisms, gifts, that enable us to perform certain ministries, like me talking to you in the context of the sacred liturgy right now. But how much more so the priest? Many of you here today remember young Norman, Son of Norman and Lee, the very artistic, charming, pleasant, and dare I say cherubic, <laughs> young man who went off to the seminary. I always thought he smiled a little too much for a guy, but hey, that's me. <laughs> now when he returned to us after ordination, he still looked the same. He sounded the same, although his singing voice was even stronger and more polished. And he still smiled just as much. But he was not the same. Not on the inside. With the indelible mark of holy orders given by the Holy Spirit, Father Norman received the same charisms as James and I, but with one very significant and astounding addition. As a priest, Father Norman was given the special graces to perform his ministry in persona Christi Capitas, Latin for in the person of Christ, head of the church. In persona Christi, he can absolve the sins that block our way to heaven. And as he will do shortly, 
in Prasanna Krispi, he can consecrate ordinary bread and wine through the power of the Holy Spirit and change them into the actual body and blood of Jesus Christ. And even it, outwardly, will still look like bread and wine, though its essence inwardly changes very dramatically. That's central to our belief. And that's why he cautioned us a few weeks ago not to sing the Eucharistic hymn with him. Of all the persons in this place, only he can confect the miracle we will soon partake of. Think about it, church. No priest, no Eucharist. No Eucharist, no church. <coughs> That's why this man is so important. Why all of our priests are so important. Why Pope Benedict declared this year the Jubilee Year of the Priests. Now I can remember back to a time when we tended to put all of our priests on, on pedestals. And the only problem is that when you put something or someone on a pedestal, they tend to just gather dust. Priests were isolated, lonely, and basically friendless. We tended to deny their humanness. Now the pendulum has swung the other way, and today we see them as just one of the boys, although with you know, a much more impressive wardrobe. <coughs> there needs to be a balance between the heaven and the earth, the finite and the infinite, which is manifested in our priests. But what about us, who are not members of the ministerial priesthood? Don't we, who share in the common priesthood, have a hard time getting beyond each other's humanity all too often. We fail to get past the surface of our brothers and sisters and behold the glory that dwells beneath on the inside. Instead, we tend to take each other for granted and confine our opinions of our fellow men to some insignificant physical traits that denies the giftedness that we all possess. We often don't take the time or the opportunity to realize that each gift is a reflection of the life of Christ. Each of us was filled in our conception with truth, goodness, and beauty by the Word incarnate. And without diminishing himself one little bit, Jesus continues to show himself in us all, if we'll just look for it. Anyone who exists in the light of Christ has stunning value. Each of us is an icon, an image of Christ. And as such, we're called to be like him and build the kingdom by winning souls for him. And if we're to do that, we need to start with each other, in our families, and in our parish, by looking beyond the surface of our humanity and embracing and encouraging the sacred giftedness that makes us unique in all of creation. And we need to nourish those gifts with the ultimate gift that only our priests can be, uh, bring into being the banquet of our Lord's body and blood. Church, let's seek out and appreciate each other's true worth right where we live our daily lives, with the familiar. Otherwise, like Christ in our Gospel story, we're not going to be able to realize the power and potential we all possess.